For Tom Izzo, as with the MSU faithful, the Selection Sunday show provided a kind of enema, perhaps. Evacuating the filth of the regular season and providing all of us a new, clean start. Is this truly new beginnings? Or is that lower intestine about ready to refill with the rankest of shits? We're about ready to find out. You're listening to Can't Read, Can't Write. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Can't Read, Can't Write, the podcast that proves Spartans can talk. I'm Mike Jones, joined as always by the man who appreciated Mahdi for the first time in his life, Kevin Grek, and the man who simply does not produce enough content, host of a little yes. listen to podcast yes. with an unpredictable publication schedule, Matt Sheehan. Sheehan, thanks for joining us. I'm sweating over here. I, I got to take the shoes of Alex Plum and try to fill them. You, you're out of your mind if you think I'm going to be even 20% of what Plum can be. On a five Have you been reading Monday the evening. dictionary this week, Sheehan, in <laughs> no. preparation? I, I, I should have gone cover to cover with a thesaurus here. because Deep man, in no, the no one, words. <laughs> no one dresses up uh, their thoughts on Stephen Izzo or officiating more eloquently than, than one Alex Plum. Um, I gotta say, sometimes like I'll just think of him in that sauna or that bathhouse wherever he was uh, on his honeymoon over in thailand and just shoehorning in that he has a podcast with complete <laughs> strangers on the other side of the world and i just laughed to myself like what a what a gem gem of a person uh amongst you know, two other ones with you two i love this show guys i've been looking forward to this all day this, this is gonna be awesome <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming. And Plum, to his, like, not to his credit, but he does a better <laughs> job than the both of us by a lot promoting the podcast. I think That's it's... good, yeah. It's global. Reverend, mm -hmm. then podcast host, <laughs> and then eventually gets to the nonprofit he works for. Sure. Runs. <laughs> runs. Run, yes, runs. <laughs> it's public information. We might as well say it. His lowest priority, the nonprofit that he runs. <laughs> Uh, he will be missed for this one. This is going to be a good episode. We, of course, oh, want to thank everyone. I his real, true, uh, lowest priority, uh, his tr beloved husband, Jason. <laughs> sure. And then yes. Yali. We don't even ever hear. Oh, like, Yali oh, is no. a deep podcast cut. It will oh, surprise no. longtime <laughs> listeners of this podcast to learn. Yali is still alive. <laughs> okay, that's good. We yes. like hearing that. That's good. Vibes are high. That's good. Yeah. Right. Vibes are high. Anyway, there we go. Yeah. continue. Yeah, we Yali used to make a lot of appearances. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, of course, everyone for listening. Uh, if we could ask a small favor, please share the pod with Spartans Your Life. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And of course, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Spartan underscore pod. And if you've not had a chance, please subscribe to our YouTube channel again at Spartan underscore pod. Um Sheehan, you do a lot of YouTube. Commenting is important. Is that that's what they tell me? Works? That's that's what someone they did say. a yeah, first sure. the other day. And I really, wow. I appreciated that throwback. That's Just big time. Well, that's how you know you've made it as a YouTube channel. If someone comments first on it, it's like, well, wow, that is so like 2008, <laughs> but that has withheld the test of time. People just there was the first. fact that it was a comment posted three days after the episode went up. Oh, so no. There was that <laughs> element to contend with. But generally, yeah, it, it made us feel really good <laughs> and warm inside still. That's good. There we go. That's <laughs> Uh, <sighs> all right, uh, Greg, do you want to give a rundown of the show? Because I put out a poll on what I have to drink this evening, and I'm going to be doing some sunshine punch orange mm. creme Ooh. from listener Mike Delightful. Jones. Uh, it says it says uh, it, it, a citrus cream and rum cocktail designed for sunny days, sparkling nights, and fast friends. Enjoy fast over friends. Ice. Yeah, so, fast friends. That sounds and like I, a great time. Wow, that we'll sounds like a Sweet 16 it. trip in a bottle. Yeah. No, it'll go fine. <laughs> that's see if I that's the vibes. <laughs> right all right. Well, you're pouring that. We're going to go on the green wall where football oh. always leads, except for this week when it's third. Probably that's because the basketball team, both men's and women's, though notably, we're not doing any virtual signal, virtue signaling this week. We're only covering the men's team, apparently, mm. according to this outline prepared by Mike Jones. Um, <laughs> so that's... That's the green wall. <laughs> He'll go off. Types, types feverishly in there. 
<laughs> and then we'll take your Twitter questions. Uh, but on Grand River, we'll cover the hockey team, which I, uh, YouTube uh, watchers, will know. I'm drinking out of my hockey logo uh, tumbler here. A GNT featuring Blue Coat, American Dry Gin. Lovely. American wow. Dry Gin. Blue Coat. Is that also from Jones, Mike Jones? Also from listener Mike Jones, and in preparation for our big GNT uh, episode later this summer, people are that people I are informed saying. my father about uh, that he'll yeah. be bartending for. Uh, it's not my fault right. that I talk to your dad more than you do. Okay, let's <laughs> not. You know, let's get personal. It's we're five minutes in. Let's get wow. personal. All right. Oh. All right. Let's head behind that green wall and talk some men's hoops. Uh, so. Uh, we got a couple games since we've last recorded that we would be remiss not to talk about, but I want to do this to we, I want to start with just making the tournament. We can kind of circle back to some bigger picture stuff after we talk about the games. But uh, she and I, I asked Greg this, but I'm, I'm super curious for you. Like walk me through emotionally. Yeah. Uh, it, not just the, so I, I guess I'm interested in, uh, pre bid stealers, post bid stealers, mm -hmm. uh, th then the literal selection show, hearing yeah. the name announced, and then did your feelings change at all after you had like five minutes for the sort of relief? I assume relief mm -hmm. uh, to leave you. Um, it, what was sort of that process like for you? I'll start at the very end. Uh, I was at my family's house. We we're having just a little St. Patrick's Day get together, and uh, after this is after I recorded my show after Selection Sunday. My mom said. Well, I'm just so happy for Matt right now. And my mom is a lifelong Michigan State fan. Like, she has season tickets to football games. She was green and white her whole entire life. Like, she watches every game. She's a diehard fan. This isn't the kind of mom that just, like, watches from afar. Like, no. So that that really painted a picture of just how truly pathetic I was acting that entire night as a 31-year-old grown man with two children pacing the hallways of my childhood home thinking that Michigan State was not going to hear their name called. So that was a real stark look in the mirror uh, to just go ahead to the very end of that. But to rewind the clock, after the Minnesota game, after a hard-fought Purdue game, I'm thinking, great, cool, 10 seed. That's a lot of fun. And then, holy crap, Temple beats FAU. And then, well, hey, at least uh, Oregon is down 12 against Arizona, right? They ain't going to steal a bit. And would you look at that? Oh, my God, what a comeback by the Ducks. The fuck's going on out there? Uh, but hey, that's okay. NC State. <laughs> NC State ain't going to win as 10-point underdogs, right? Those legs have got to go eventually. DJ Burns, fun player, but that's a big boy. He can't sustain this the entire tournament, Kenny. Well, holy shit, he can. And every <laughs> single bit is getting stolen. And I don't sleep well on Saturday. Not whatsoever. And I wake up. I text my good friend Joe Cook Sugar of 131 Sports. He does bracketology. I say, hey, should I go through the whole day with no anxiety, or can I continue as a high-functioning adult, or should I just shake this off? And he says, hey, Taylor Swift has a song about that. Shake it off. It's great. And I say, hey, you just give my wife the greatest birthday gift she could have, a mentally functioning husband. Fast mm. forward to 10 p.m. that night after all the bits have been stolen. He DMs me, hey, hope you're done celebrating the birthday. It's time to worry right now. Mm. And that felt like a bazooka to the chest right there. So as we're watching Selection Sunday, right off the bat, FAU is an eight seed, and of the five bracketologies yeah. that I studied religiously before that show, that wasn't in any of them. In and I'm them, fragile yeah. enough as a person where the first thing that something's off schedule, I, I start to go batshit insane over here. And then when Virginia yeah. pops up on the screen, oh, and we yeah. got only one more regional to go, oh, I... I <laughs> I, I should be in a psych ward right now, mm. padded up. Like, it, it was unhealthy. So that's that's kind of how... it. I, I, that was not a linear way of telling that story at all, but I, I, I hope I landed that plane. I was not well whatsoever, guys. That's uh, a, a look into my mind right there. Not, not good. I'll say, for me, I found myself... All of those things. I was texting Greg furiously during the show. Yeah. Yeah, it felt Rex a trying to have a like, nice time with my family. It, it felt a little bit like his election <laughs> election night on Twitter, where like people are like, "Oh yeah, how much vote is going to come in from Piscataway <laughs> County?" But have uh, another tranche is coming in. It, like it, it felt like that in real time. Like if if they use an eight seed and uh, this and that, it was just like it was uh -huh. mania, and we had to have him breathe into a paper bag and put his head between mm -hmm. his legs. 
Um, and then he cried. Um, I don't think I've ever actually said, I've been pretty good about since my son sort of became speech cognizant of, uh, I've not used the F word in front of him. And when, when Virginia popped up, that changed, (laughs) that that changed. That's a mulligan. You're allowed under those circumstances. There are certain Um, times where it's allowed and encouraged. And that's one of them. They have to know. But I found myself Mm -hmm. angry a little bit afterwards. Okay. Mad at the team again. Like, you did this to me. (laughs) You didn't take accountability for what you're supposed to do. We shouldn't have been in this position. Like, this is your fault. Like, why should I be feeling relieved right now? This should, we should have never been here. Right. Right. If I may, um, that's the fun irony of all this is that so far this season, I'm averaging 2.1. I hate this teams per game for all 32 games. I like, I just sometimes despise watching what is on my television. I absolutely hate it. I'm a, I'm a worse person at the end of every game, but damn it. There I am on <laughs> Sunday willing to sacrifice a limb just to see these assholes pop up on like the 11 line uh, in Dayton or something like that. Like I, I was begging to see more of these people that just yeah. absolutely tear my life apart for two hours a night. So it's, that's just, the I, I can part, relate to this. It? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't want it to stop. I don't want, I don't right. want to stop saying I hate you. It's sick. I hate <laughs> right. you so much. Right. Uh, both of you, both of you were looking over at your elder sons being like Satan. <laughs> I might be open to a deal right now. I like, yeah. yeah. Now's the time, Dark Lord. Come on, give me ten seed. Give me the play to Nathan. I'll do anything. (laughs) Yeah. No, it it got real. It got real, real. (sighs) And what's wild is Greg was texting, like, you know, bear in mind, no, you know, no team with our net ranking had ever been left out, right? Right. And Mm -hmm. what's wild is that that statement is now sort of technically true in the sense that no team with our ranking has been left out, but Indiana state set the new record. Um, record. And so the, the sort of thing you thought you could rest on is just, I, I don't know if there's a weird committee. Maybe they just, maybe the net is great until you introduce that many bid stealers and it, you know, but it, it didn't like it, hated it. Um, It's also a little wild. Uh, Like, for this tournament that like you're so worried about being in it at all. And then you turn up to be a nine seed. It was just like right. just right. barely on the back half of the bracket. It's like, right. How does this whole system work? And I know it's because of all the automatic bids and all that stuff. And it all makes sense, but it's like still like the nine seed should be solidly in the tournament with no concerns, which is its own thing, I suppose. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we were watching with people that like only. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, no, that's no, no, good. That's on me. I'm gonna leave. no. Like we're watching with people that like know what college basketball is, but like beyond a bracket, they they don't follow the sport whatsoever. So like I'm sure when Michigan State as a nine seed popped up, as as if like we we didn't look crazy enough during all this. I mean, th- this all this threatened for a nine seed. Hell, we were we were seated higher overall than Northwestern even was. We were safely in the entire yeah. time. Just yeah. it, it certainly just did not feel like it. So it, it, this was a great exercise in just mental health and what the month of March can, can do to a person. Not Maybe not they should do it instead of by region, by like seed line. So that, do you remember the all... year they did it alphabetical? I do remember oh. that year. Or, <laughs> that or was... do you remember the year they brought in the TNT guys and did it over two hours? That one, and they... <laughs> I, someone should be in jail for that one. That was the worst. That, that was not good. Yeah. Yeah. But Charles I, Barkley, Barkley alphabetical. and Shaq. Dude, but that was, comp- oh, that was horrible. <laughs> I went, Jesus. when was, how long ago was the alphabetical one? I think it was like mid 2010s where like they did every team alphabetical and then they placed them into the regions. And I don't know if that was the same time as the two hour show. And that's what made it two I hours mean, long. But I swear there was one be. or two years where they did alphabetical and then placed you into the regions. Like they, they really, really milked that cow for all it was worth. Dare I say impressive like- by TNT. I gotta say. And that was before Charles Barkley discovered that he likes college basketball. Yes. That was when he very right. clearly did not know anything. And Clark Kellogg's just sort of like coaching them all in yes. real time. <laughs> like, uh, actually, in college, it, the, there's two halves. Right. <laughs> They're all Corso yeah. and, and Clark is, is Herb Street. Yeah, right. not great. Um, 
All right, should we talk about these these couple games from the tournament? Um, we don't have yeah. to spend a ton of time on them because they're a little bit dated now. But uh, and I don't know everyone's that that's where everyone's moved on. But uh, they were two good games. So one was maybe a win. one the... was kind of a win. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So Minnesota, uh, Michigan State takes down Minnesota 77 67 um, in a game that uh, I, I think spelled a little bit of trouble early because Malik Hall got his auto bench with two fouls, uh, sat out, yeah. I think, like 12 minutes of the first half, maybe 10. Mm-hmm. Um, the And then ended with, uh, and the first half ended with uh, Carson Cooper taking a hook shot to end the second to last possession and then got blown by on the, the other. Like, I mean, it felt, it had the hallmarks of this is a disaster. I love it. End this season now. End it right now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Their division two transfer big man having nine points at halftime. And then our three combined centers having, I think it was three combined points. Oh yeah, just pull the plug on this whole thing. I've I've had enough of you assholes. And then the next we, we got to talk about <laughs> Parker Fox, who can come back another year. There's no At, way. Are you, are, are you 40, 42 yeah, year he, old no, Parker Fox? Yeah, he'll be twenty seven, I think. Yeah, he can come back. Oh my god! <laughs> someone has to speak for this. Someone needs to be punished for that. Wow. Uh, he. I mean, and honestly, if I'm Ben Johnson, like, do the Hell hustles. Yeah. Yeah, I, dude. Yeah, oh my god. I yeah. I'd take yeah. him back. He's a culture Get old guy. fast. Get old fast. Get he gets his COVID year. He gets his Omicron year. He gets his Delta <laughs> year. <He> gets, <laughs> like just keep bringing him. Let you get that a year for every roll, booster baby. that he got too. It's great. He's he's got yep. four boosters. Yeah, he he's he's he playing got, twenty thirty one. He great. got Pfizer instead of J and J, so he could get two years <laughs> out of that instead of just one. Perfect. Slick work. That's nice. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but MSU's guards, uh, despite playing a real stinker of a first half, uh, AJ became electric Walker, uh, in the last five minutes became kind of unstoppable, uh, at the yeah. rim, uh, Trey Holloman, incredible game. Uh, MSU, I think recorded 11 steals, uh, Sounds right. seven of seven of them were against Pharrell Payne. Um, cool. <laughs> who just had a brutal game. Um, but I, I don't know. It, the It felt like at least defensively, the intensity was there. Like the sort of the, yeah. the cultural touchstones of Michigan State were there. Um, yeah. The shooting, though, foretold. Can I be honest things. with everyone? Yeah, I sure. have almost no memory of this game at this point. Like, it was just a week ago. <laughs> And it was the last, maybe the last win of the season. And I have no memory of this game. It's been erased for me. That's how I think traumatic the Purdue game was. And then the Selection Sunday experience. That this is just gone from me. This has been selected in my brain for deletion. Um, And it was just like a week ago. It was less than a week ago. Several days ago. That's true. I I saved the voice memo you sent of you just cackling. Uh, at some point in time when they were missing shots. <laughs> That's what brings me joy now a days is when I know that I'll have content to come on here and just scream into the void about something that they're doing. That's how I consume these games now. Um, Tell to that end, good. I don't know. Sheehan, do you want to own yeah. when, when it looks like maybe we weren't in the podcast in the uh, tournament? Was there a little bit of you that was like, this will be good content? Oh, I have a my, lot to talk about. I gotta about. say, I, I hate to admit this, like, because I actually don't YouTube think about this a you. lot. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 did, I honestly did not think about, like, my numbers a lot, but, like, there, going into the last commercial break for a fleeting second, I thought, like, this is gonna do incredible numbers. numbers huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, this, this could, this is gonna thoughts. give my kids. <laughs> An incredible Christmas, if not for nothing else here. Uh, yeah. We're going to move a lot of those MSU yeah. fan sign things off of oh, this yeah. one. It's going to happen. Yeah. eBay Motors is going to be thr- <laughs> Yeah, LinkedIn Jobs uh, is going to be thrilled with the numbers that this is going to put up as I am weeping 
uh, and debating <laughs> Seppuku on camera uh, for the better part of anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. Yeah, that would have been something else. Yeah, but, well, uh, if, luckily, if Daddy Locked On had come in show. and said, if, yeah. if Daddy Locked On had come and said, you need to do, you got to keep it at 30 minutes, would you yeah. have told them to take a hike? Like, I need, I'm going to need my six therapy. hours. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, I think I would have. <laughs> yeah, and they would have understood too. Um, I, I, you I'm would sure. hope at least. Yeah. Oh God. I mean, don't, more ads. not only does Misery Love Company, all the Michigan State fans, but like, let's not kid ourselves here. Like the, the parade of rival fan bases just coming to oh, gra- just grave dance uh, would have been. It 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 would have done like um. Gangnam style numbers, I, I think on YouTube, it, it would have been bad, <laughs> and it would have been my last video ever too. So like we we would have gone out with a bang there. I, there's no shot I would be able to go on after that, but uh, luckily we could just move forward after that. Yeah. Oh Speaking of which, should we cover well, this Purdue game before we we talk about the tournament stuff? Can I say really quick on yeah. the Minnesota game just how weak and fragile a person I am, like and just like how stupid yeah. I am and how I'm a rat always. that always takes the giant slice of cheese on the trap. Like, I, I know better than to think this, but th- those last eight minutes are why, when I put my head on the pillow on Wednesday night before March Madness starts, why I think that somewhere deep down inside me that Michigan State can go on a run here. It was yeah. everything that we were promised. Great defense <laughs> on the perimeter, especially. Your seniors stepped up. Tyson Walker went into takeover mode. A.J. Hogart didn't miss in the second half. And then Malik Hall, despite playing like 45 seconds, he was productive in the second half. So, like... It's like that that's that's what we want that's what we want to see that's what we saw against Marquette last year like damn it guys just do it yeah. for four games coming up that's another final four banner despite the fact that these fucking guys four last five, no not, not not even four last five games the last five games the northwestern win included have looked like hot dog water but no yeah. I, of course i'm going to let the last 8 minutes of that game against a minnesota team that is so checked out of their season get way too into my head so yeah well, I, I let's, do have let's on the one Minnesota up. game. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's one up it because I, I think in some ways watching the Purdue game though was a bit of an affirmation of that. Yes, Could, I know. Couldn't I shoot myself for Couldn't that. shoot. Yeah. No. Oh but, God, no. No, we're, we're we're done making shots the rest of the year. Like that's just one small problem. But, yeah, it's yeah. over. It's so over now. Yeah. Let's yeah. I, because I want to be able to talk about the officiating at the end of the this segment. But let's all just agree and to say out loud that. If MSU had made shots, the officiating mm-hmm. would not have mattered. And they didn't make shots, thus they mm-hmm. lost the game. Now you can also say maybe that the officiating had a role, but whatever. Um, we'll get to that later. MSU should have made shots. There were wide open shots to be had. They didn't make them. They lost the game. Great. That said, I watched <laughs> this game and said, where has this team been? Like, played hellacious defense. Mati mm-hmm. Sissoko looked good for the first time all year. Uh, Tom Izzo's drawing up a game-winning shot for Booker. Correct. Or game-tying, <laughs> I guess. Like, it, and it was a perfect pick and pop. He just missed it. Like, who cares? Like, I, I, yep. I, I saw that play, and I'm like, brilliant. Great play call. It didn't work. Yeah. But uh, Trey Holloman is going chest to belt line uh, with Zach E <laughs> in a, like... It, like it's I mean, dog it was it's got dog. Yeah. It was incredible. Like I, I mean, it, I don't mind. Lo- I I was so angry at the end of that game because it's everything that they could control, they did control. Yeah, all of the effort, all of the defensive work, all of the knowing that your opponent, like the rebounding effort. I don't care that you missed shots. I mean, it's it's a bummer, but like. The output, where the fuck has that been? Yeah. I, and I think we talked about the Draymond it's, quote. It's it's funny how it changes. Like it it's kind of a similar outcome to the game at Mackey in certain ways, but it it's in a different context and it the emotions are different as a result of it. And it again, there are no Moral victories. We're not looking for that. But it did seem like, okay, this is a one seed. They're getting every call in the book. 
And we're not just hanging with them under very slightly different circumstances. We're up in this game at times, five points, six points, something like that. I know that never actually did happen, but um, I get what you're saying, Jonesy. It, it felt like affirming again of what you were talking about for like the last 10 minutes of the Minnesota game continuing here. But there were also moments that were maddening in this game as well from this team. What do you think, Sheehan? I have a hypothesis like where this team has been, and you guys got to check me on this. If, if I'm just on Mars, please let me know. But what has what this team only known the last four years? It's just like mediocrity. Let's call it what it is. Uh, again, hey, I you know, love this team despite saying that I absolutely hate them during the game. Like uh, when I look from the outside, okay. Go green, you know, go green till I die. But look, it has been mediocrity the last four years. It's the fourth year in a row. They go into February completely out of the Big Ten chase, right? There's really nothing to compete for. And when they're going into February, they pretty much had the big or their uh, their seed in March Madness locked up, especially after that Illinois game early into February. Lack of focus, just saying, hey, we'll just turn it on in March when we can. You know, there's not really a lot to play for. I just kind of getting complacent. And I think that that's kind of close to the truth because what we heard from the Iowa game where Davis Smith of all players yeah. is the guy that's yeah. firing the troops up. And then the end of the Ohio state, game, I don't know. So I think it was a team that just kind of, yeah, so we're, we're in March. We're going to be like a high seed, whatever, like, you know, anywhere from six to 10, uh, we'll just start trying when, uh, when we want to. And that's kind of what we saw in those two games in the big 10 tournament. I, I don't know because it's not like they know anything else in their time here. It's not like they right. know, like, oh, just, hey, always staying on constantly 24-7 because you are in a Big Ten regular season title chase. Like, it's just kind of what they know. Like, okay, a few weeks in February, and we'll take some losses. We'll get into March, and then, just like last year, time to start trying. I don't know. I, I, I might be way off base there. I might be close to the truth or somewhere in between, but that may be where the team has been, just sleepwalking through February because nothing really to play for, I thought. I could, could you say that's know. kind of where the program's been for a few years? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. It, it feels really like likes to put itself behind the, way I the eight ball. Studying. No, you're not wrong. Oh, I, oh, I hear that, Jonesy. That's <laughs> yep. That's uh, wow. Well, the hits to the core. Yeah. Yeah. Like finals yeah. coming. I guess now I should try at school. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna open up that book for the first time this whole semester. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm gonna download the coursework I should have downloaded four months ago. That's that's certainly what I'm gonna do right now. Yeah. I what is that, my man. login for Lon Kappa? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. I'm really dating myself for that one. I bet they haven't used Lon Kappa. That since was throwback. Like, it's, it's like 1993 or something like that. Oh come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh, uh, yeah. Maybe that's why I hate the team is because I see yeah. myself you hate in them so much. And you see yeah. yourself in the team. God damn. Wow. We're doing an I, introspective. I got, I got, I got my therapy tomorrow. I'm going to chat about this. Uh, this is, <laughs> Can I join? This is going to be. You want to join? Because I'm, wow. We might have just really put the, the finger on the button there as to why this team yeah, is just what this really is all cut about. wrapped around their finger. Oh my God. <laughs> It's just because I see own, myself in them. Procrastinating. I see my own inadequacies in this team. Wow. It hurts. <laughs> just every teacher at Parent Teacher Conference is saying, you know, Matt has so much potential, we just never see it. And then, like, shit. You mean what I say about this team after every fucking game this year, huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go upstairs and yep. cry a little after, uh, after we do this. That's okay, though. Well, Jones, you're going to have to start paying conversation. You're going to have to start paying your therapist to watch MSU sports games. You're going to get like two invoices from them. Mm -hmm. wow. It's going to be the the four hours for the time they spent researching in advance of your call. And then there's going to be right. the four hours that they have to spend yeah. with you just like trying to keep you, you know, coherent and sane. Amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, figure that out. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything uh, sort of additionally notably from this game that's um, nah. super worth talking about. I mean, officiating. Uh, Trey, great game, great game. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. It, the, yeah. I, I, well, let's actually chat about AJ, uh, not AJ. I'm sorry, Jaden for a second, because uh, mm -hmm. Izzo mentioned this in his press conference today that I think he said it after the Purdue game that Jaden made a comment about that, that he's not helping the team that like it made the comment that Jaden's a relatively even killed ki kid, but like clearly was down 
Um, and and in fairness to, to Jaden, um, in some ways, like he's not wrong. He's aware, but, at least. Yeah. But like you look at that Minnesota game, and he had like a a two minute stretch in that game where he was like owning both sides of the floor, right? Defensively uh, really uh, produced for a uh, 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 couple possessions. Like the, the effort related stuff is there. And, and I guess I, you know, maybe this is uh, sort of transitioning into the, to the next part of what we could talk about, but she and I'll ask you this, what, because we've all said, I hate this team now. Uh, what would actually get you to, what would they have to do to get you to change their legacy? How would you, is there anything you can do to say they drove me crazy? Like only yeah. a family member could correct, but now I love them. Cause I don't know that I'm ever going to love them unless they achieve substantially in the postseason. They don't get those like yeah. try hard games anymore. It's it's a it's an incredibly high bar, and it's going to sound ridiculous, but it's a Final Four. Uh, like that was the expectation preseason. Top top five preseason start aside, let's just imagine that they they are not even in the top twenty five to start the season. As a whole, this nucleus of the team has gone four years with a uh, Sweet Sixteen, maybe two, never being competitive in the month of February for a Big Ten banner. Uh, like right. what two Big Ten tournament wins in their four years here? I I'm sorry. It, it, it is. It has been mediocrity. Would be putting it nice. I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, but to go out with a bang here to make a good legacy. Oh yeah, it's it's a it's a damn hard achievement to to get here. But it's a Final Four banner. I, I'm sorry, it's it's tough. It's unlikely. That's where I'm at right yeah. now. That's how much I got to do. I think they're fortunate Rick. that you've offered them redemption at all. I don't know that a Final Four oh, banner no. works for me. Let's go. I, I like it. that. I would nice. take it. I'd be like, okay, thank you. Why not more than this? Why <laughs> right. not more? Why only this? And why did you do that to me the whole time leading up to this moment? Yeah. An eight seed this year, guys, in the yeah. Big Ten tournament? <laughs> right. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> Unforgivable. I is what I, I would say that. as I'm, as I'm personally <laughs> reeling it up on a block and tackle pulley up into the banners, uh, up in the rafters at Breslin, making right. sure that it's all nice yelling over my shoulder. Yeah. yeah we had it yet. Buy yes! $400 worth of uh, gear on fanatics that say final four Phoenix on it. Yeah, of course. Correct. Yeah. My new oh, tumbler yeah. with G and T in it. <laughs> right. yes. I've got the hat. I've got the shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm oh, eating man. an AJ Hogard <laughs> University Wiener hot dog. You got oh, this. <laughs> I get it though. I get it. <laughs> this is been, it's been a long four years. It's been a long four years. Well, yeah. I guess related to that, do you, I, I, do you have any worry? And I guess it's everyone probably has oh, some yeah, worry, but that yeah. that this team is is currently printing their mission accomplished banner, right? Like <laughs> made the tournament, right? Like. <laughs> We, hey, we did it, guys. Nailed it. Solid as a rock. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's yes. a worry, right? That's kind of what we talked about a few weeks ago. Like, is the program debased to the point where just getting to the tournament is the goal? There's, there's no other goals other than that. It's like, did it. Nailed it. Checked it off. We didn't ruin Tom's streak. You know, what does the line look like over at, you know, Dublin right now? Field house. Um, let's right. go. Yep. Field house. Right. We're going to have to explain that a little that. bit later on because yeah. there's a Twitter question about that, by the way. Yeah. I, it's like to answer the question quickly. Yes. Like I, the, the, I would not be shocked if the mission accomplished banner is already hanging up in the locker room. I mean, do I think so? No. But would it shock me? Absolutely not mediocrity breeds mediocrity that's all i've known the last mm -hmm. four years so that's kind of just the short version of the answer yeah yeah uh God, I hate this well team. <laughs> can't wait to watch him again thursday god i'm gonna be glued to the television right. it's gonna be great <laughs> i i both immediately was furious at them and then put the do not book on my calendar at work for yes. the game time like 
I'm using like, and, my and paid I will say time as, off to watch this team on Thursday. So, yep, that's where we're at. I will. Uh, I, I will say that I, I know uh, a lot of a lot of folks out there tend to think that there's like some magical line you can cross of like being critical of this team where you're no longer a fan. And the reality is, is that like you can hold a lot of things in tension. Um, Mm -hmm. And I do hate this team with a passion, but that as much as I hate them, I want them to succeed more than that. Uh, And, and I will cheer harder for them than anyone else. Uh, I might also really relish and enjoy when when Greg sends me his cackling voice memos when they miss a layup <laughs> for the eighth fucking time. But you know, uh, y- these things can coexist. Um, uh, not to make us dwell on this game, but we're also this summer going to need to have a long to you episode where we just break down why stuff. this team is so wed to long twos and missing them at a tremendous clip. Um, Mid-range twos in this game. Uh, three, four, twenty on mid-range and long twos. Uh, four for 18 on threes. And again, I'll point out for people um, that might not be aware, three-point shots worth uh, 50% more points than two-point shots. So, oh, wow. um, interesting. Huh. Interesting, Matt. Yeah, jot that down. Wow, that's a fun fact. Can't read. Yeah. Can't write, it's a but little can math. It, can it's math, a wrinkle in basketball. Um, not a lot of people know about it. Um, Tyson Walker doesn't know about it. AJ Hogar doesn't know about it. Uh, Trey Holloman. Josh Langford know about didn't it. know about it. Josh he invented Langford it. solidly invented it. believed that this was not true. <laughs> what's your favorite that was genre of long two? <laughs> What, what's, your, what's your guys' yeah. favorite genre of lawn two? Because mine is passing up the wide open three to dribble into a contested lawn two. Or is it the end of shot clock because we just spent the first 22 seconds touching ourselves and doing nothing, and then oh, here comes a prayer. Like, what's your favorite genre of lawn two? There, there's a lot of good options, unfortunately, for this team. It is definitely I, the passing up the open three to dribble into the contested mid-range two. That is that is the finest of the twos. <laughs> I particularly enjoy it when they do it on a fast break opportunity, oh. but like there's a guy who's like guarding the hoop and it's like they didn't realize. So they start the dribble in and are like, uh, and then yeah. just take the shot. <laughs> it, and it's already in their head at that point in time. So it's also a terrible shot for that reason. Um, but Sheehan, we're going to have to have you back on the summer for that breakdown, because I think we need to uh, like, put a whole oh, matrix please. together of the varying types of long twos. Um, yes. Can it be during gin and tonic night? I would, lo- I would love to join. I'll be more fun and drink yeah. on the next one. That's yeah, it, for, it'll okay, be, uh, it'll oh. be in person. So uh, oh, I'll be in Michigan. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, turn uh, invitations that's in what the we're mail. talking about. Wow. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I'm fired up already. All right. Uh, let's, let's chat about the women's team. I did make the omission, uh, but it is worth mentioning that they probably got screwed uh, big time in their their bracket, um, drawing South Carolina as their second weekend uh, or second yeah, game of the weekend. Yeah. Yet undefeated South Carolina, who's just a whatever tank of <laughs> a team. Teams, maybe the yeah. best coach in men's or women's hoop at the helm. I, who's, who's to say? Uh, it's it, it is what it say? is. They're due for a loss, right? They're due for a loss. It's fine. It's, and you know, if you if you want to continue to drink the uh the green Kool-Aid, as we are for all tournaments here, uh Michigan State has played high quality competition down to the wire. Uh yeah. and like Caitlin Clark the had famous, to hit that yeah. super highlight shot. Put her in that situation yeah, that- where she needed it. People are saying that on the road at uh, at Iowa City, yeah. Uh, like this is a good and fun team. It's possible that there's no one in the Big Ten who can even like sniff at South Carolina. So, you know, uh, yeah. but a real bummer of a draw. I don't really like. I what's interesting is that my experience post men's tournament draw was just being happy. Like there was no complaining about what bracket we were in or our seed line. Like it was just like, thank God we're there, which I actually think is a really sad statement because I can't remember a time not complaining about who's 
bracket we were in or our seed line or like it it's a i think as fans we got to look hard in the mirror that we're not complaining about this stuff but that's uh, a good point like but it is nice to complain about the women's draw they they had a great season and they got kind of the shaft on this one so <laughs> um yeah real bummer South Carolina will be tough. I, I, just because I'm uh, progressive and I just like to think that I'm better than everyone, and I'm a champion of women here. I actually watched the selection show. Thank you. I should be getting applauded for that. I, I'm sure all the female listeners are just falling over right now. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <Yep>. you. But yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. I had it on uh, in the background. Adam, you're welcome onto that too. <laughs> yeah, yo, you you most certainly are welcome. That's right. Uh, you <laughs> you had watching. it on while your wife was tending to the chi- the sick children in the other room yeah. and and, and doing all those after cleaning the kitchen. Right. <laughs> yeah, she was making an, another pot roast. Right. It was a, at eleven o'clock at night, but I said, ah, get in there anyway and start making another one. I'm you're asking trying to be for better a, than everyone for here. Beer right. from the other room. <laughs> just, just my eighth one of the day. That's all. You know. So. You know, I'll just try to keep it a light night on her. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm watching the, the women's selection show. They're talking about South Carolina. It's like, hey, well, what do they need to worry about? And then all they had to offer was like, oh, well, they're not great at shooting threes. And sometimes they don't make effort plays. It's like, oh, so they're so good that they get bored during games that they don't die for loose balls. Like, that's 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 what we got with South Carolina is a team that gets bored during their games because of their <laughs> dominance. Great. Awesome draw, guys. That's that's what we're looking for. So that's uh, that's that's the main takeaway I took during uh, Matt's big night of uh, championing women. Women, yeah, that's right. Oh, you're an ally. You're I'm an a ally. massive ally. That's right. Mm-hmm. I've I've moved mountains for the women's community. That's, that's right. <laughs> oh boy. I, I I hope I'm coming off draped in sarcasm here. I, otherwise, I'm going to seal like a real prick. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I watched 15 yeah. minutes of a selection uh, women's show. So. Big ups, big ups to me over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. We, thank we you. salute you, Matt. Thank you for bringing that energy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gotcha, guys. Gotcha. Let, that's enough talking about that. Uh, let's yeah, let's get that out of here. <laughs> Check. All Check. right. Check. <laughs> no, uh, team, though. Really. <laughs> yeah. No. And Robin Frey, like, like, legitimately, if if folks haven't been watching, they've missed out. They're, yeah. Yeah, they're a really good team, uh, a really senior-laden team, high-intensity, high-effort. Like, I'm certainly not going to say that she's an Izzo clone because she's not, but she has right. brought something that feels really sustainable here. Now, entirely possible next year's a bit of a drop-off, you know, trying to build your own roster, et cetera. But, like, this, there's a lot to like as a coach, it, like X's and O's, her philosophy – so if you have not been watching, do do check out the women's team. Uh, they're they're a blast to watch. Uh, hockey. Let's chat some hockey real quick. Uh, do that hockey. Uh, Michigan State wins over Ohio State two to one, uh, advancing to the finals for the Big Ten tournament, and will now host Michigan at Mun. Uh, Greg, as someone who is now expert in hockey because you've been to mm-hmm. some games, um, mm-hmm. uh, what what can you share here? A uh, great game. Trey Augustine played out of his mind again. Um, the shots I thought were were very even if you just look at the stats, but it seemed like the opportunities were better on the MSU side. A couple goals waved off on both both teams. A um, little bit for an Ohio State team that was not expected to advance, and I, I don't think one lucky end of the I, season. They, yeah, they had a little bit of a plucky end of the season. They beat us already. Like, they made it count. I'll give them credit. Um, but uh, the better team won, I think, in that game. And it sets us up for an absolute monster of a Big Ten tournament championship, which I will be attending. I will see you there at Mon Ice Ooh. Arena on Saturday. Um, yeah. So wow. uh, sets us up for what is perhaps – the biggest game at Mun in twenty years? How long? Like crazy long. Fifteen years? Longer than that? Yeah. I mean so it um, might be twenty years. So yeah. Uh because the other biggest games would be like NCAA tournament games, the national championship game. Those obviously didn't happen on campus. So um it's 
it, it depends on if you really like care about the Big Ten tournament. As far as I'm concerned, this team has already won the Big Ten championship. But still, yeah. um, it's another potential banner put up. And it's also the op- the ability for this team to, I believe, according to the math, if they win, secure a number one seed Ooh. in the NCAA tournament. So a lot on the I line. I thought some other things had to break for them for that to happen. I think someone, I saw someone gamed out all of the potential outcomes because there aren't that many now. And we were up by like a fraction of a percent above, I think, is it Denver or something that we would knock Probably. to the two line? Um, so I think with a win, you might secure a one seed or at least get really, really close to it. Huge game. It's just nice to have Huge an game. electric game on campus. Again. Like this is the most electric game that's going to be on campus since 2021 Michigan football. I mean, because look, it's, it's been, we've talked about basketball. Not a lot of market yeah. games. There have been some fun games. Don't get me wrong. Like the Illinois game this year was fun. You know, whatever. The the football win against uh, Central was a good time. Richmond, suck it. That's right. Uh, but no, but like for, it's been <laughs> two and a half years since uh, a game of this caliber has been on Michigan State's campus. I mean, n- never mind just the importance of it with the Big Ten tournament and against Michigan. Sure. Like, it's just it's just nice to have like a marquee must watch event back in East Lansing. So. Uh, God, Greg over there just tickets to this game. Listen, just wow. Listen, wow. and we, simultaneous we with don't... that, uh, we're hosting the Big Ten tournament uh, for gymnastics as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's also happening at the same oh, time. Oh, no. shoot. Which... I, I lost my championing of woman card on that one. I did not notice <laughs> that. <laughs> Held it for four minutes. Okay. He had it. New Damn. record. <laughs> she has <sighs> taken his mission accomplished banner down right now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> go back into storage. I have to champion. I have to Shoot. champion for women. I've had a little. I can't wait to see it on by the by, <laughs> uh, by our social media manager. So I really Let's truly go. appreciate women right now. There's Let's go. There's a champion in the household. This instant. <laughs> Uh, I'm passing the baton thoughts. over to Greg right now. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was fun so, while I lasted. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's let's uh, let's do some football super fast. Uh, so spring football begins this week. Sheehan, uh, I know today, I think, um, you you chatted about some storylines coming out of it. Uh, Jonathan Smith yeah. talked to the, the press. Uh, some notable things that came out of that. Uh, I, I first, uh, candidly said, in a, in a way that... I'm not used to a football coach being candid said it would be up an upset if Childs was not the quarterback this year. Um, yeah. I mean, we all know it, but like you expect when everybody is new in that room, I, I mean, we know Childs is getting a lot of money to be here, but you'd expect yeah. he'd say it's an open competition. Everyone's going to get reps, blah, 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 football guy, football guy, football guy. Like, and he's like, yeah, no, it's, it's his job. Like, I don't want to pile on Mel Tucker any more than like every state fan already has, but like, but you could just imagine how weird Mel would have been about this whole thing. Like, he wouldn't have even mentioned Aiden Childs by name until week four <laughs> of the season. Like, it, yeah. it, it, it would just be nonsense quote after nonsense quote. Oh, Alessio Miljovic. Yeah, no, he's actually <laughs> turning the heads. So, for Tommy Schuster, actually, you know, he grew three inches ever since he got here, and you would never hear about Childs. Like, oh, it's just a breath of fresh air. It's, and then, it's, then it's Schuster's nice lining up at fullback when the season comes around. Right. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, I don't think he make, turn in heads. I don't think he was doing that for roster management purposes. I think he was doing that for like it's, it gives us a competitive edge. Like no one one hundred percent who yes. the quarterback is going to be in the fall. You know, if we don't talk about it, they'll have no way of game planning this out. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Now with NIL, especially with these guys, it's like. We know who's got the seven figure deal and we know who's got the university we not deal. So yeah, yeah. Um, the, the quarterback making more than our women's basketball coach. Uh, he, he will be under center, even if he has an injury in fall camp. Uh, that's, that's a certain is basically what Jonathan Smith said. He's going to yes. need to be missing two limbs to this, even be a competition coming up. It would be I like an Smith... NFL coach being like, is our max contract guy going to be the starter or is, <laughs> or yeah. is the, the, is Brian Hoyer on team 40? <laughs> we 
where you know is he going to be the st- the starter? Like that would it's the exact same thing. It's just nice to get some shred of transparency here, man. I think Smith would have offered up like a two deep depth chart right now if anyone asked at the press conference. I don't, I don't think he would have shied away from it. He would have gone up and down the whole roster just like that. Well, to that Almost end, scoured. actually, uh, I thought this was the next interesting thing that uh, Smith said. Uh, he talked. Uh, he was asked about, are you going to throw the whole playbook at him and see what sticks, or are you going to do a smaller install? And he said uh, that he was going to go with a smaller install because he wanted to be able to actually evaluate talent. And it felt like if you were just throwing stuff at people, you wouldn't know if they're any good at football because they'd be stressing too much about like the play, Um, Mm -hmm. which I mean, is just an interesting sort of philosophical approach from the coach uh, about, about how to manage things. Um, And I guess related to this, something that's given me a bit of optimism uh, called out that the, he brought his entire offensive staff with him and then mentioned obviously that Childs is here, um, is it Tanner Miller, Tanner Milner? Yeah. Miller. Miller. Uh, yep. at, yeah. Miller at offensive guard. Uh, and then, uh, Jack Velling, uh, tight end are all here too. And if we we're being real places that MSU could use a lot of, uh, sort of language coherence around being able to install, like those are your blocking groups and the dude who runs the show, like, these are big ads from a just sort of uh, institutional knowledge perspective, right? Like being able to pass it along to dudes that are in the, in the rest of the room. Um, so that actually like was a subtle call out that I thought was a reason for optimism uh, for coming into this fall. Um, also talked about Joe Rossi uh, said, talked about how he's getting plenty of autonomy on play calling, but that there's some sort of philosophical things that, are expected of him, uh, which I'll be, I don't know what that means. Right. Like, but we saw that with Mark D'Antonio, uh, the, he had opinions about how to run your offense to make your defense better. I'm super curious what Jonathan Smith's version of this is. Um, uh, I think it's just, he showed highlights of every third and lawn at Michigan state the last three years and just said, not this, don't do, don't, not don't do it. Don't do any of this. The Please. deal and is thank you, Joe. Yeah. Anything but this, Joe. <laughs> yep. Anything but these shenanigans going on. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. check in midway through the season, see how things are going. Good luck. Go get them. But yeah, just total, total, just go do your own thing, Joe. Vibes out there. Which uh, fine, fine. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna pay a guy uh, like that, give him the latitude. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Particularly when it's not your wheelhouse, right? Like right. You, you got to know what you, you know, so that's, I'm, I'm curious yeah. sort of what the philosophical underpinnings are, but I appreciate that he's like, Joe, you go do you. Um, Gian, uh, as the social media clips start coming out, what on the Zapruder film are you going to be watching? Uh, you you kind of talked to, touched on this a bit today uh, on, on your yeah. pod, but like, what's intriguing to you beyond like, can Aiden Childs actually throw? Yeah. Oh, no, I want to see piss missiles from Aiden Childs. Like, first and foremost, I want to see him <laughs> sling that rock 80 yards just to get that out of the way right there. I know that's going to be what everyone's going to be drawn to. But now, at this point, like, what does the receiver core look like? Because TJ Sheffield, no longer here. Um, Jalen Barber, who I thought, hey, maybe he could be a sneaky slot guy. He was on that same bus as TJ Sheffield, it turns out, and he is no longer here. So I do wonder if it's going to be Antonio Gates Jr. Do we get Nick Marsh even as a true freshman this early? Mm-hmm. Again, like, can you get all these answers in spring ball? No. Is that going to stop me from watching every Twitter clip and saying, oh, there he oh, Mar- Marsh just caught a ball. He's cemented as the third <laughs> receiver. There he is right there. It's over, guys. Like, yeah, so for the offensive side of the ball, it's, it's just going to be the receivers uh, catching passes. Mixing it up this year. Catching passes. That's right. Quite in the yeah, same like that? way that basketball has three-point attempts that people don't know about. Uh, see also, you can forward pass down the field the ball to a receivior uh, yeah. who can advance <laughs> several yards mm-hmm. past. Or tight end this year. Maybe. where they catch that ball. Um, so again, <laughs> a lot of people don't know about that part of, of football. Certainly, if they've been watching MSU over the last year. They will have yeah. not have seen that, but it, it can happen. What a just uh, crazy answer, though, just on the surface. It's like, I'm excited to see you guys catch a ball. Like, <laughs> really? Like, 
that's 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 kind of what i'm looking at like it's oh i cannot wait to eat up every single second of every single cliff they post out oh give it to me right now just hook it into me let's go you get a full breakdown on lockdown spartans your team you know it baby jack valley catches an eight yard (laughs) seam pass we are anointing him (laughs) as the next rob Gronkowski. that's right screaming it from the mountaintops it's gonna be great it's gonna be great uh the Uh, next thing we gotta chat about is oh a beer should we pour it out for mahana teate do uh, should we should i just like right here on my laptop let it rip what a what an era what an era. Let's all Remember go around the horn was... and share our favorite Mahanateate <laughs> moments. Uh, the first time he was in the transfer portal and then he came back. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's got to be mine. Um, no, I, I remember he committed here. It's like, shit, this Mel Tucker thing's going to work. Yeah. This guy yeah. just Steve? recruited a four-star over USC, over Zoom. It's over for you bitches. It is, you guys are so dead in the water once this guy can start shaking hands with these kids. And then, uh-oh, it turned out that four-star linebacker has a six seven forty time, and um, <laughs> none of it actually worked out whatsoever. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, we got was... a little ahead of the skis there uh, back in the COVID class, but oh well, oh well. <laughs> we we were taking what we could get at that point in time. We were we were down bad, horrendous, <laughs> horrendous. It was, it was <laughs> yes. real bad. Um, yeah. Good luck to him though. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spartan dog for life. Uh, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I. I've come back around on this. Right. You, of, you really um, just set it up on that one, Mr. Sheehan. I know. I know he did. What? He did. And then, and then I was like, oh, but Keon, but now Keon's come back into my heart. That's uh, for life. I guess. Come on back. Come to see you. No, I, I guess, you were, apparently. Josie, I thought this, this was a NIL transition that oh, you we were well, we doing. Yeah, we nicely because we got a chat yeah, about Spartan nation NIL, uh, what? which is now, public question mark uh it, it appears there was a massive press event well all the coaches about it uh alan howard was there uh this is a nio collective that will be funding all sports at michigan state uh Shan, you're a bit more plugged into this side of the house like do you have any sense of of how this is all shaking out like when what the role of sd4l is in- that's just, like I, I know I do the SD4L show with Justin Thin. So when you say a bit, yeah, I said a bit, in, a bit. Whether people want to believe this or not, I truly, do, really do not know a lot. Like I know just a, a little hair, and even like this Spartan Nation IL was like somewhat of a surprise to me. So like it, I know it's going to seem like I'm dodging questions and I'm dodging. Look, no, yeah, God, yeah. I truly do not know a lot. It's the name of the show. I'm not doing the spreadsheets. And settling how much money each player gets, or doing the taxes on the billionaire donations, like I, I don't believe you. I know close I think to nothing. Every <laughs> podcast you meet <laughs> right? with the shadowy figure of Steve yes. Saint Andre, automated money counter. Yep. That and... flight to Iowa, I actually took the intercom and I said, "All right, everyone on this flight, I'm going to start pointing at kids." And you are the ones that are losing payment right now. You're, you're and out. I just, you're out. Seventeen C. Who's the stand up for us? Yep. Sorry. Nope. We can, all right. And next, twenty six D. Like, oh, sorry. So, yeah. Ma, like, uh, I see you. Yeah. yeah don't, don't duck behind the little entertainment system over there. No. Like, contrary to popular belief, that that's not how close I am to it. I I just babble about it with with JT on a show sponsored by the collective so i know it's the lamest answer in the world i know that might make people somehow more upset but um yeah it's it's truly pathetic like how little i actually know about this i have opinions i guess i could offer but that's that's it yeah. Yeah. Well, so sorry. what we what we do know sorry. is that greg williams is the primary mover on this yes. one uh yeah. and it seems like based upon the retweets that they're certainly connected with the football team Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. we do know, th- I feel confident saying that, uh, they released their price point packages for fans getting involved. They're high. Uh, if you're already say buying season tickets, potentially buying season tickets to more than one thing. Like, uh, I think it yeah. starts at $500 a year for like a tote bag and like a, it's like sort of like giving an NPR gift, right? Like you get a tote bag yeah, and a drawing right. in something, um, yeah. which 
But, you know, in, in fairness, one of the things that we said um, about one of our, our critiques of what was happening a while back with SD4L is like, stop trying to make it a you're buying a thing, right? Like that, like I get something for my money because ultimately like sure. the money just needs to go to the student athletes. Like, um, and on the website, so, to the credit of Spartan Nation NIL, or Sparty NIL, because apparently we're taking that back in the same way that we're taking back can't read, can't write. Um, it does say it does make the claim that ninety percent of all donations. Do you say donations? I don't know. It's, it's contributions. <laughs> we'll say go directly to student athletes. So there is that is the most transparency, the most financial transparency I have seen of any of the collectives to date. So and, and yeah, at a lot of schools too, like that's not unique to Michigan state. Uh, mm -hmm. That, that sort of what your administrative cut slash prize cut slash the raffle tickets they're printing off inexplicably. Uh, like that's, that's nice. But the, the point of entry is kind of high for membership. And, um, and so I don't know who this is for, right? Like, you know, yes, because it, it, that's cause my it's, best piece it, of advice. Yeah, is yeah. let's let's go work to, on go price GM. points, yeah. and then that goes for all nil collectives too. Like the even the SD four L, like not, not not ripping him, not not badgering anyone here. I just friendly advice. Like five hundred dollars a year is a lot to a lot of people. I mean, I know it seems like yeah. you know, hey, basement, get your foot in the door. Am I going to tell my wife, hey, um, my next paycheck is going to go to, uh, you know, just paying for Jordan Hall to hang around here for another two weeks in the offseason? Like, I, I, I don't necessarily know. I, I think the pricing can work a little better. And I understand that. Well, yeah, okay, if you offer just like $100 a year, that really doesn't put a dent in things. It, it, it's it's to include people. It's to make them feel like they at least belong, which is still kind of what happens with $500 a, a year, I believe. Because let's not get it twisted. Like, the bulk of it is still coming from the highest of highest level donors, the people yep. that are having mm -hmm. this thing up. So. If you want like a sense of community and, you know, helps the bottom line a little bit, drop the price point down like that. that and that goes for all collectives, not just even MSU. Like it's, it's like that across the country too, of some other packages that I've seen from different collectives. But that, that, that was my first thing too. It's like, huh, another collective where we are asking a lot here for the bare minimum package. So I, again, this is just advice. I'm a big advice guy. That's all I have to offer. Well, it, just opinions and, it's, and it's advice. It's not that different. <laughs> It's not that different than political campaigns or Michigan State when they're trying to raise money from their alums, right? Like, sure. As a recent grad, they would be thrilled to take five dollars from you. Like, that's not a joke. They would be thrilled to take five dollars yeah. because it sets up a habit of giving. It sets up a relationship of giving, and right. uh, and so and you you see it all the time in political campaigns. Like, give one dollar, give five dollars, give you know ten dollars, right? Like, it, it's it's about creating the list. It's because because then you've also captured an email, right? You've mm -hmm. captured yeah. an email and a mailing address. And then now, now you have additional opportunities to market. So I don't know if y'all want to sell a, uh, you know, get your attorney on the horn and for get some information about running a sweepstakes, $5 raffle to, to get a, a signed Jersey or, you know, what, like it doesn't matter, but like get people's contact info, give them ways to engage and so, yeah, like I, you, to your point, Matt, and it's, and it's the right point. It's the point that everyone needs to remember is that ultimately there are a handful of folks who have more money than everyone listening to this podcast combined together will have in a fucking lifetime. It's Times just borderline <laughs> criminal how wealthy they are. <laughs> and, and, and so like, they're the ones who can give an insane amount of money and it like, we can't touch that. But that's also true in politics. So, it, like, and, and it, it, these things aren't actually that different. It, truly, like, the model is the same. What you're trying to create yeah. here is engagement and relationships and a, and, a, and, a, and a habit. And so I don't, I just, fundamentally, you just launched this thing and you started at $500. And I can't imagine a more stupid decision. Like, because you need to hit people up for guy. money again and again and again. Like you need to be able to email people. You need to be able to text people. Like you need to be able to call people. It's just stupid. Yeah. Anyway, it's um, also a world of microtransactions now. And like, I, yeah, just like a some like five dollar raffle ticket to yeah get 
courtside seats to a game, like a, a, a raffle, you know, you're not going to win. But what has that ever stopped me? Shit, I, I buy, you know, the, the little pull tabs at the bar or whatever I go or the, the 50-50 raffle, raffle tickets. You play the 50-50 raffle, right? Uh, yeah. Every single time. And who knows if that's even legit? <laughs> I mean, but I will do it every <laughs> single time knows? like a sucker. Who but, like, knows? I, that lady like, yeah, might I not want idea. us to get the W. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, or it's like, oh my god, Spartan Stadium, well, wow, the last four home games haven't been collected. Oh, huh, that's a little bit, but yeah, fine, I'll have, yeah, give me down for another $20, I'll buy another round of them. So, yeah, I mean, just something small, something where people can just take a bite of the apple, but keep on just dangling that tree in front of them, too. The, god, why? Can't we can't write NIL group? Is that, did, it, did that just get birthed right here? People are saying. People, People are saying this is what I'm talking about. Let's go. I, I do sincerely let's, think let's that if Patreon for it, raffle if off Jones... of sessions with Alex Plum, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. I will buy a hundred dollars worth of tickets if that's what's on the line. That would be delightful. Delightful. We'll we'll get the brain trust together cooking on this. Mm-hmm. We got this. Mm-hmm. Where's Rome? <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's go. All right. Let's uh, let's shout out a couple things super fast, and then we'll head off Grand River. Uh, of course, Greg, you were at Mama's Mercantile and Eatery this past weekend where you hung out with my family. Um, Producing content and hanging out with Cliff Jones. Always a pleasure. Salute you. Wow. The Cliff Jones. The. The, the Cliff the Jones. The legend. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mama's Merc, uh, new menus out, new cocktail menus out, new brunch menus out. Uh, like, do check it out. If you find yourself in the area, uh, do stop in. Great food, great prices, great booze. Seriously, great booze. Mm-hmm. Speaking of booze, we got a shout out again, listener Mike Jones. It's not How is bad. it? You it's, sat with it for, for an right. hour now, whatever we're at. How is it? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it reminds me of uh, when you've had a, a bit of a sugary uh, cereal and the, you drink the milk afterwards. Like, wow, it's it's good. Like, I don't know. It it's, tastes like it's a delicious. Home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, it tastes like me childhood. Saturday morning cartoons on the beach, alcoholic That's childhood. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. So my childhood. Nice. Awesome. That's, that's <laughs> great. Sunshine <laughs> punch. Fantastic. That's <laughs> A citrus cream and rum cocktail designed for sunny days, sparkling nights, and fast friends. Try it wherever wow. you get creme cocktail, pre-mixed cocktails. It's, it is really delicious, though. Like, uh, I'm on my second, and I'm about to go for my third. Don't hate Let's it. Let's go. At all. Nice. At all. That sounds uh, like it would be delightful on, like, that opening Friday night kickoff against whoever MSU's playing that given season. Just... 80 degree September day, crack open that and just pour it over some ice. Brother, when I run Ooh, into you, like... I'm gonna be ha- I'm gonna be handing you a bottle of this. <laughs> and and the two of you Let's will go. meet eyes and you'll say to one another, fast friends. And the the response will be <laughs> fast friends. And then we'll you'll enjoy. <laughs> sure, and then you wait. won't God. share any other words. You'll just walk past each other again. Yeah, no, no we way. don't even stop our stride, mm-hmm. right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Just keep walking Hand on Shaw. Off. Opposite directions. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do a lightning round here of off Grand River to get to the thing that's actually worth talking around. OSU hires uh, Diebler, probably not a surprise. Dude started winning games as soon as he was uh, given the interim tag. Good for him. Um, It looks like there's going to be a lot happening with the Big Ten and the SEC just throwing their weight around all over the place. Um, And unfortunately, it looks like the NCAA tournament might start looking a lot worse in the in the immediate future, we might look back and think this is like the last true tournament or the second to last true tournament. It is not encouraging the, uh, the news coming out of there. Tom Crean rants about teams turning down the NIT. And that was good. I don't particularly care for Tom Crean, but I agreed with him. I agree yeah, with him. Yeah. These guys Excellent are going to, especially now that they're getting paid to play, go play Indiana. <laughs> don't turn down the NIT bid. That's Mm. Also, do you think you're so good that you can't afford to play more? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Greg, that's what gets quick, me is like, it's, sorry. No, no, no. no. Uh, well, she and you go first and then I'll ask the question. I keep doing this. I'm sorry, guys. No, it, it's just like the teams that are saying no, like St. John's or Ole Miss. Like, who the fuck do you think you guys are? Mm-hmm. That's one thing when North Carolina does it last year. Like, okay, like, it's kind of bullshit, but like, I at least get it. You know, you're one of the blue bloods, but. 
the hell are you doing at Ole Miss saying no to an NIT? Like, yeah. in, in no world are you above that. So, and that that's just my gripe. Chris Beard is it's above like, nothing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that's been well. That was my first thought. Yeah, that's true. Is that's true. oh, Chris Beard, you're drawing you're drawing the line here <laughs> at, at the NIT. Mm, interesting. <laughs> Oh, wow. Is that because you want to have more time at home, Chris Beard? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but, yes. Uh, you so you mentioned you don't like Tom Crean. Thing. Wait, hold on. You mentioned you don't like Tom Crean, and some people are saying Mark Montgomery might be headed to Detroit Mercy, and that would leave an assistant coach spot open. Oh, God, don't you dare. Don't you dare would, put this into the universe, Mike Jones. I how swear would you feel to about God. Tom Crean coming back. I swear to God, Mike Jones, if this happens now because of you, because of what you it. said here today, because a drunk Alan Haller listened to this, <laughs> I swear to God, Mike Jones. Alan, I cannot I recommend it. enough Sunshine Punch. Citrus cream. <laughs> Alan's and rum. in his office Not right you. now watching Family Feud going, Fast Friends. Fast friends. Fast friends with Mike Kareen. Mike Kareen, that's nice. Tom Kareen, rather. Uh, hook it up. Yeah. Let's go. Need that. Tom Kareen was asked if I was a recruit. I, I saw him at an event down in Florida. I said, hey, Tom, can I get a picture? He said, yeah, wait, well, hold on. You're, you're, you're not a recruit, are you? I'm sure he was just <laughs> trying to flatter me. But nevertheless, he thought that me standing at a cool five foot nine, 135 pounds back in the day. Uh, yeah, he asked me if I was a recruit as if I was some four-star power forward. So, uh, Ever since then, had a soft spot for one Tom Crean. So make that's the a, hire, make fast friends with him over there, Alan. Let's go. That's really good, that's nice actually. Guy. Nice guy. Now I have yeah, two reasons it. to like Tom Crean. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Greg, what's the last right. thing? Well, I already poured out all my beers for Naha and Uh But shoot, uh, we need one more. Fast friends. Athletic mm. Brewing Company. Matt Sheehan, I did this Hate for it. you, bud. Um, wow. Wow. Is uh, that one Jawan Howard is no longer employed at the University of Michigan after posting the worst season in my lifetime at that university? He's out, he's gone. Um, and his that hurt his goodbye note was <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> it was I like, did not see this, I did not it, see this. It's on, it's on Twitter. Half of it's like, I came here to do what I want to do. I did it my own way. I had my own successes. Anyway, yeah, now brother. I'm fired. Bye, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> it's nice. All right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So he, he did it his it, own way. That's for sure. No one's yeah. doubting that. No one. Yeah. <laughs> Except for he, the decision he, to leave or not. That was not his. He left a mark. Way. That's for sure. Mm. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to miss him so much. What's wild is the athletic article that came out that revealed that a, uh, a firm had been hired to investigate the culture around the program, which I really, and this is well been well said by other folks, but if you have to do that, if you need to hire a firm, then <laughs> you've already answered the question. Yeah. Like, it, but it, it genuinely felt like in that moment, reading that news before he was fired, that this was Ward going to do what he did before with Mel Pearson and just mm. latch on to one person saying that everything was fine and an attempt to give him more runway. I was actually, frankly, after discovering that, a bit more surprised that they let him go, even though it would have been clear at that point in time, you really do need to let him go. Uh, though, of course, there's the the rumors that Santa Ono told him either we can hire a basketball coach or we can hire a basketball coach and an athletic director, uh, your choice, uh, okay. which doesn't feel surprising for what we know about the relationship between Ward and Santa Ono. But if those rumors are true, that means you need to lose your athletic director. Like, oh, it's kind of like He's hiring the culture firm, right? <laughs> yeah. If it gets to that point where you got to make that, and uh, Sheehan, what are you going to remember most Correct. about the about the Jawan Howard era? 
at the University of Michigan. Bringing hate back into the rivalry. Because that's the one thing I hate about John Beeline is just how likable of a person he was. And Michigan State fans talk about it all the time. I talked about it last night with my dad and then my Michigan fan uncle. Just like how much, you know what, I don't like Michigan, but I respect the hell out of John Beeline. And I said, yeah, that's mm-hmm. why I hated him. I, I, I want to absolutely despise, absolutely loathe who was on that other yeah. sideline. And like that that's what Juwan Howard brought back. I'm not saying he's some like criminal or, you know, he was the worst person in the world, but oh man. He, he did some things and said some things early on, too, because, hey, he got early success. And that turned into, surprise, air against Ann Arbor. But, like, uh, he, he brought back pure, uncut hatred in this basketball rivalry. And to sweeten it, just drove it into the fucking ground, too. It's just, mm-hmm. just, oh, mm-hmm. just so nice of him, too. He was the perfect Michigan coach, taking something, being born on third, and somehow – bunting into a pop fly out to the pitcher like it, it, it was unbelievable so i'm i'm dearly gonna miss him he seen that on the twitter timeline during the michigan state minnesota game really made me sad devastated it actually. was so that's it was what I'm a gonna real remember. bummer when that came across I know. god he was perfect I, uh, for them. perfect i will i will say that i uh i am i will always remember that time that he ran on the court and got a technical to prevent cash from getting a fast break three like Really thought he had unlocked a cheat code there. Uh, I miss him. I miss him credit. already. This sucks. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> I heard. I heard that um, as a fired coach, he's going to fired coach Valhalla, and he's roommates with one Mark Turgeon, and it's not going well. It's <laughs> not going oh, well. Wow! To, to go back to the Chris Beard conversation we just had. Wow! This is a. <laughs> It's taking a dark turn in the last few minutes. This is, whew. Um, good luck to Mark. I know he's a very threatening individual, apparently. So uh, go, 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 get him. Oh God. Ask for a new roommate in Valhalla. Uh, all right, Greg. Should we preview some games? <laughs> no, let's not. No one wants this is this for previews. Um, oh, listen, no, no, no. She listens State. from time to time. She haven't. How often? How much do you value the previews that Greg puts out? Yeah, I value every minute of of this podcast. <laughs> this this is my favorite show. I'm not I'm not just pulling sunshine off your ass for no reason. Like I, I, I do digest every minute of this show. It's great. Oh, that's very sweet. And of just you. and what was it? What was it from our uh, cold open? Yeah, what, uh, you you know, what's your Venmo, real quick? We, we, <laughs> yeah, let me get that. Hold on. <laughs> your lower intestine potentially refilling with the range. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, uh, Mississippi State turnover prone. Bad three-point shooting team, really good three-point defending team, and very, yeah. very athletic. They are good at defending on the interior and then also closing out on shooters. Um, so it's going to be interesting because on paper, even with our friend Jay Nakins, ours is a relatively good three-pointing sh- three-point shooting team. So to have these two teams go against one another and to have our front court be who the front court is it's an interesting matchup i was astonished at the the early lines are msu by like several points right what is it is it two i saw one and a half the last one and I a saw. half yeah i yeah, guess that's that's the last not I that saw. astonishing but i think that's um, goading, favored, goading by based upon brand if we're being honest and that, um, that's something you trying to be overly negative. i think you're right yeah like i think you're, right, you're trying to get the public to bed at that point in time yeah. Are you guys ready for just a full MSU versus MSU broadcast where they that comes up like a thousand times of the two MSUs? When's the last time we played Mississippi State? We played we played them when Rocket was there, didn't we? He wasn't no. playing, but he was on the no. Okay. Oh, maybe you're, I don't think so. No. No. We I don't okay. think so. I'm thinking about when Rocket was on Oakland and we played them when he was sure. there. But Mississippi State, I can't remember the last time we played Mississippi State and anything. So MSU v MSU. Mm. And then after that is UNC. I think the weakest of the one seeds, right? We yes. Yeah, it's just in Charlotte though. Like that's the thing. It's like Michigan State just they, we we they, earned they, they that. We be... earned it. Yeah, I know we did. Oh, I oh, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just uh, like accepting the inevitable of what's going to happen. Like this isn't me bitching. Oh, how could they do this? Like they did because oh, North sure. Carolina no, no, actually I know. won a few I games know. this year. <laughs> I, I want this to is me redirecting that. my anger at them because they did this yeah, to fine. themselves. Yeah, that's I hate true. this yeah. team. 
I, uh, I, can't, I can't wait to watch. I can't wait for Thursday though. This could be great. I, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, uh, it's gonna be Sheehan, a horrible game too. It's so ugly. It's gonna be... uh, Sheehan, I want to grant you the opportunity to say goodbye to folks or lightning round through Twitter questions. It's up to you. I can hang around for like fifteen ish more minutes. Let's let's go All for right, it, guys. Bring his Twitter questions to the front, Mike Jones. Give I them out I don't his know. Twitter questions. Let's just we're gonna lightning this, listeners. This is to oh, get more wow. Sheehan. Oh. All right. First up, Mike Jones reminds us that he has a bracket challenge. Sheehan has promised us he's going to participate eight different times with eight different brackets. Uh, so you oh, can Lordy. check our Twitter feed for oh, the bracket challenge. Uh, next oh, up God. from listener Mike Jones, uh, <laughs> Sheehan, how puckered was your butthole before that fourth region was released? <laughs> the, uh, like, it, like I can feel it in my throat. That that that's how much it went through my system. It, it was it was not good, and uh, I just God, I'm so glad it's all over. So glad. Uh, Greg, preseason top five finished middle of the pack in the Big Ten. How far does MSU need to go in the tournament to feel like this was a successful year? Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, playing for a natty, or we made the tournament streak. I think oh, I made it clear. Continue. Final Four is not enough. I need that that natty if I'm ever going to forgive this team. Final Four <laughs> leads to a just a dressing down of them as I put the banner up myself in, in Breslin Center. It's going to make... It's going to make Tyson Walker finally cry. He's been on the verge of tears all season, and it will finally yes. break him. <laughs> Next up from Beth Amaro, uh, Shahan, is there any chance this team is the 2024 Cinderella story? If the answer is no, what's your best predicted descriptor of this team? Is there a chance? Yes, and I hate to go back to the last eight minutes against Minnesota, but like we do see what this team can be. Like Senior-led, guard-led, what makes the magic happen in March? It's guard play for the most part. And just like you said, of the one seeds that you can be drawn against, North Carolina is the fourth rated one, but also on Torvik, they're number nine. So they're vulnerable. If you map out a neutral court game between Michigan State and North Carolina, Michigan State's only like three-point underdogs in Nor to North Carolina. However, it's not truly going to be a neutral side. court game. It's going to be a home game, so you got to factor that in. But look, it's... I do like that you, yeah. you, you ran those numbers, though, to tell yourself... Mm -hmm. Technically, this is a neutral court game. I, oh yeah, I appreciate oh, your psychosis. Yeah, we do mind I tricks appreciate... in March. Oh, I go full delusional during March. Yeah, I, I will spin any web to my liking in March. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do here. I so, respect. Jonesy, possible, next honestly. up from from Kate Wall. Who are the two to three players that actually show up in the Mississippi State game? Ooh. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Jaden Akins, Please. Jackson Kohler. Oh, God. Yep. <laughs> I, he's wow. due for a breakout game. I'm going Are Jackson Are you describing Kohler. just a, One way to a put fake it. game <laughs> that cannot happen under any circumstances? Like, where <laughs> is this coming from? Nick Sanders, Tyson, number three, coming in. Yeah. <laughs> Tyson Walker, <laughs> Jaden Akins, Jackson Kohler. And the, the reason uh, is that AJ will not have a good game. Uh, the way Mississippi State helps off of uh, off of wing def uh, wing players uh, to to stop a drive into the into the lane, they're going to be. So if you're imagining the three point line, and you cut it into fifths, so you start in the in the corners, and then there's sort of that next quadrant, uh, and then there's the top of the key. Uh, they'll help off of that next quadrant between the top of the key and and the corners, which is where Tyson and Jaden will need to live. Uh, sort of alt on this is Trey Holloman. Someone's got to someone's got to go live from three when AJ drives the lane, and AJ has to keep trying to drive the lane. He will not score, but he ha he will have those opportunities for a quick uh sort of. It's not a pick and pop, but like that that positionally pick and pop three. It, but it'll be a guard that'll be there. Um, okay, so someone's salty like that, that they don't do the previews. All right, it's next from Kate Wall uh, to Sheehan. Uh, are you looking forward to the fake second half comeback before RJ Davis I takes over and yeah. we make it to playing at UNC? It's if we make it down to twelve at halftime. That's a massive if. Yeah, no, we'll be down twelve at halftime, and then next thing you know, at the under eight timeout, we are up four. Boys it's are the Arizona cooking. game all over Baycons. again. Oh, and dude, Bacon's got four fouls chilling on the bench. It's going to be great. And then he comes back in. It's like 623 left, and the announcer's going to say, ho, oh, ho, risky doing this before the under-four timeout, and he is going to just have his way with us. So, uh, yeah, 
Am I excited for it? Oh, I just can't wait for it. It's going to be a great Saturday evening. Fuck it. God damn it. <laughs> Next up, I'm gonna be at a Great Wolf Lodge for my father-in-law's birthday party. Let's. Oh my go. god! <laughs> Can I please come? That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. You're, you know, honestly, just come out. Wow. We'll hang. We'll fast friends. Yes, I gotta hang out with my bud yes. <laughs> that I met in the yes. in the water slide. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I can't wait. I can't for this wait until the. Let's go. Uh, uh, the staff at the Great Wolf Lodge are like two thirty something dads are sharing a <laughs> bottle of what they keep calling fast friends at the top of the water slide. Like who wants to go talk to them about how this is not acceptable behavior? <laughs> All right, next up, Thomas Zambiasi. How should I be uh, forgetting what day it was when I tried to submit questions last week? Very. Next question from yeah. Zambiasi. Is the Big Ten currently purging any evidence that they didn't use the pinwheel logo for the conference tournaments last year? Oh, uh, what? Is this real? Yeah, the pinwheel we, was that, not I re- in play last year? I remember weird, that like, being or, a thing. Yeah, it was a strange intertwining basketball logo last year. Trash. Oh. Pinwheels back. Here to stay. We spent Play. a lot of time watching the tournament games this year being like, the pinwheel's going to be crazy next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. But there's going to be less red, and that's what matters. Next up from Keith What's Johnson, your... 32. Why doesn't this team have that dog in a matchy? Trey Hellman's got it. That's fun. But, like, that's the thing. It's like we started to see glimpses of DAWG in the last few games because Hogard, say what you will about him offensively, even in the losses. Defensively, like, he is locking in. So that's fun. That just doesn't show up as much in the box score. And uh, we're going to need to see some box score things happen here. But, yeah, I mean, it's got to be more than just your sophomore backup guard, though. I know it's asking a lot here out of a teammate of 23-year-olds up and down. But But how excited are you for you to have Trey Holloman run this team? I like, honestly, he puts a twinkle in my eye that I didn't know was possible. I did not have like high hopes for Trey Holloman this year. And even throughout his whole career, it's like, yeah, he might be like a fine player here. It's like, shit, he give him the keys right now. Yep. Let's go. Then why I regularly sit my player. son down and say, you need to make me this proud. It's, yes. <laughs> it's the, it's the headband. It's the one player I was willing to apologize this year, uh, to this year. And also put a word in for Jeremy Fierce, who was, uh, again, shot in the leg. We don't talk about that, but it <laughs> that happened. did happen. Yeah, that happened. Next up, JRL Jonesy. Uh, how many hours of sleep did y'all get prior to today's selection show? We know Sheehan said none. So reading minutes. the turtle questions yeah. is very good. What about yourself? Uh, I I chose to DM Sheehan and be like, "Hey, what's going on?" Uh, and, and just project my anxiety into him. So because I knew he's sort of like the giver, uh, he would just take that anxiety. <laughs> And, and carry it for all of us. A real Christ-like figure, in addition to being an ally that Matt Sheehan. Wow. Uh, and so a big episode for me. Wow, this is great. <laughs> so uh, I also, uh, j Rel, um I didn't rely on fast friends, but I did I did rely on my friend Miller Lite. Uh, and, and that did get me to sleep that evening. But it was <laughs> not good. <laughs> Uh, Chemical dependency I'll... is the solution, JRL. Uh, next up from Ali uh, Sheehan, if we did make the tournament, would Plum have burned down Fieldhouse? <laughs> can oh, this is where? Oh, yeah. Can we explain <laughs> why the Fieldhouse has popped up now twice in this episode? People should know. Are you willing to do it, Sheehan? Do you want me to do it? If Open Gym was at Fieldhouse, I think the three-point shooting would be going a lot better this year. <laughs> There's equal time spent in Fieldhouse and Bristol Center. That's probably, again, just based on when the very little lose, I know about the things. Fieldhouse will be populated. The uh, only person having fun the last four years here is whoever owns Fieldhouse. So I guess that's... that's Runner-up, Lou Hobbs. Do you think SD Farrell Sheehan should just cut out the middleman and just send the contributions directly to Fieldhouse and just sort of set up a tab there? Would that be more efficient oh use God. of funds? This would be a brilliant <laughs> idea. You know how much paperwork you'd cut out? You know how much time in Excel you would save on my end? Over here, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> but to answer the question, Plum would have been on the local news by 11 p.m. sharp. Uh, should. Should things have gone south on Selection Sunday? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Next up, Ali, we've got to credit him with the very first that we will encounter, MSU, MSU joke. Who do you have, MSU or MSU? I'll take MSU. MSU. Spartan1770 uh, asks, how many F-bombs did you guys drop during the selection show? Uh, Jonesy, we know of Asked one answered. already. Yeah, I caught myself, but I did say promptly, Blake, go eat dinner. And <laughs> go, he was... <laughs> You out of the room. You, you can't be here. Right Come on, now. get get to stuff. <laughs> I it's it's. I will just say is it, very quick. When the child came around, uh, my uh, ebbs and flows from sports got mitigated. Right, like stayed a lot more yeah. even keeled because you just, particularly when they're young, you don't you you just can't. You you got to move on, right? Like because they don't care. Um, but this was the first time I think that we kind of flirted with, um, daddy needs to go be alone for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like we were in yeah, that dad's gonna go punch a pillow in the other room for dad's going out for, to for cigarettes stuff. right now. Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> see you. Yep soon uh next up spartan 1870 <laughs> if msu was not a blue blood program what seed would we have gotten on sunday mm. uh, i don't I, i'm not i don't uh, i just want to say i'm not gonna answering this i don't think we should foray into the question of blue blood not blue blood um but we can certainly oh, say take national yeah. brand for sure and tom is a brand in his own right um I don't know that we make the tournament. If if we're the other MSU, I don't think we make the tournament. Mm. My mind's in a pretzel because I thought for sure, since we are the brand name, I thought for sure it was going to be Tom Izzo in Michigan State versus Rick Pitino in St. John's in that Dayton game. Get some eyeballs on those Dayton games. Use Michigan State one more time. But then, like, they didn't, and they just put us in a nine seed. So I'm like, are we a And Pitino brand? didn't make like, it. Yeah. Right. It's like, do they do they care about anything anymore? Like, what, what what's the hell's going on here? But yeah. So I, I don't I don't know I don't even know how to answer that question. I'm well, there's some there. selection Sunday guys listening to this right now. Like, oh, that would have been a good idea. Oops. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Can we receive yeah. the tournament as, right now? Yeah. Uh, as six people are going to watch Virginia versus whoever they're playing. Who who do they play? I don't, I don't know. know. See, exactly. That's the pro- there and lies the problem. You know what? It's because Virginia popped up on the screen, and I didn't even read past the slash I, on Selection Sunday. I just already just clapped to my you're knees. Just like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, Satan. It's, it's over. Satan. My you oldest. Know what? Twenty-five years was nice. Right Twenty-five here. years was good. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Joe M. Uh, not that we are in. Why are we going to the Final Four? We're not. No. <laughs> January, not. February is O. Shut up, John. You shut <laughs> up, John Rothstein. Sorry. It does not Sorry. count this year. Uh, 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 next up from Nate yeah. C. Uh, Scum at Mun, time for revenge. Can't wait for next Saturday. Where are you watching? Some of us are going to be Rex watching. Rex watching at Mun. That's very exciting. High class. And, blah, 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 blah. and Greg's going to FaceTime me, and I'm going to be watching through my phone. On FaceTime. <laughs> through phone the entire time. Uh-huh. That's right. Still no, I'll try better to YouTube split network. screen. Yeah. Well, is it on we'll Big Ten Plus? The or is, it's on the network. It's it's on it the straight has to be network. network. Has to be on the Ooh. network. All right. Next up from Nate C. Uh, it's incredibly likely we'll be seen as the lesser MSU after the basketball team chokes for the 19th time this season. <laughs> how long until after a better? <laughs> how long until a better sport can set the record straight? Saturday. Uh, I'm on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, next up. Yeah. Bonus. Please tell Matt that I love how pessimistic he is. Fire and brimstone, buddy. Yeah. Love it. Every time MSU loses, the world dies a little, and Matt knows this. I saw. I saw this comment, and I love Nate. 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 Awesome guy. Better guy than I'll ever be. Let's just recap the last year for Michigan State. Uh, you know what? You got me. I'm sorry. I was a little negative on the four and eight football team that had to apologize for Hitler trivia during the season, and that <laughs> their head coach phone up a sexual assault surviving advocate over there. I, I did get a little negative when we blew the 17 point lead in the fourth quarter against Rutgers hand up on that one, or the fact that we couldn't even tie our own shoes against Iowa stumbled to a loss there, or I guess you got me there too, that I am a little pessimistic that my preseason top five team built of 23 year olds lost 14 games this year. 
I did get a little negative out. You got me. I'm sorry about that. So, but but Sheehan, <sighs> but Sheehan, let I me ask you this. Though. Yeah, Sheehan, I think you might you might be a we might be kindred spirits here. Are you going uh, to submit one bracket that has MSU winning it all? No, I'm not. Oh, wow. I, I, I never do. The only time I've ever put MSU in my final four was 2015 because I always hedge my happiness. But after they lost to Wisconsin in that championship game, I was like, shit, they play like a team that's built for a March run. And it's like the one time in my life that I was actually right about something. It was very exciting. But, uh, yeah, that's that, that's where I'm at right she there. A hedger. You hedge she hand hedges. I Which I gotta say, like hedges. I don't have to be like hot up on the pessimist comment, but like I got a comment this week on a YouTube video saying that, oh, there they go again, just blowing more sunshine up MSU's ass like they have been all year. It's like what what is what? Huh? What? what? <laughs> We're too positive or too negative for you people. What's going on here? Right? So I don't know what to do, man. I don't know. I'll just keep on reporting like what I see through my eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's as good flowing. a time Next. as any. We bring in, we brought in Matt Sheehan to replace our most pessimistic uh, team <laughs> member. Um, so I think that's as good a place as any to thank you for your time, Matt. Oh, appreciate God. you. Um, you guys are the best. I love the show. This this is the best. The yeah, laughs thank you for and the on. smiles that you guys have offered me during mundane days at the office, uh, just fantastic. And Jonesy, I got to pull you out really quick because early October you joined my show, and this was after a period of my life that was insane. Father passed away. No, not father. I'm so sorry. Grandfather passed away. Ten days after that, my kid was born. And mm. in between those ten days whirlwind of a pregnancy for my wife it, it was crazy yep. so you hopped on before we started recording you said hey are you doing okay or like how are you doing and not the how are you doing like you give to like a gas station worker or you know so you see in the grocery store that was an earnest how are you doing in a time in my life where i was doing horrible <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was a wreck so as as much as you guys are entertaining you guys are also that extraordinary of gentlemen i love you guys you guys are the best so i've been looking forward to this chat all day you guys are the best thanks for having me on and Keep me here during mailbag questions. This is exciting. This You'll is fun. always be the best. right here, right here inside us. Oh, well, listeners are throwing up right now. I bet <laughs> listeners are absolutely fast friends. Right Gian. This is fast <laughs> friends. <laughs> this isn't why people listen to this podcast to hear people gas each other up and share. I love yous, but yeah, they're, they're, they're vomiting everywhere in their car right now. If you could just like just subscribe, comment, etc., That'd be great. <laughs> just like, yeah, sure. Comment how much you Run hated the this moment. Uh, yeah. But no, it, or just Shan, edit this all out. Actually, that's fine. Well, here I can nope. ruin it for us. Dan, uh, the truth is, Good. Jones brought that question to you with all the sincerity that we bring to our yeah. coverage of women's sports and at <laughs> yeah, right. So, bravo, <laughs> so, bravo. I ruined that's it. Right. Don't worry, I burned it down. At the end. <laughs> what a way to land that plane. That's that's what I'm talking about. Oh. Uh, well, fast friends. Until next time. <laughs> Cannot wait. Go green, buddy. Already can't wait. See you in the water slides. Yep, you got it. Here we go again. <laughs> See you again. All right. So next up from Karen Jonesy. What center are we nabbing from the transfer portal? This is tough because we don't have the transfer portal yet. No, and if there was a moment to keep Sheehan on, it would have been for this question because he talks to other people who cover this that stuff, but we do not. So Yeah. Ah, center is for sure what we're nabbing. Yeah, right, uh, and and hopefully so much more. Excuse yeah. me, gonna need a uh, long wing. Next up from Lobster Puncher, what would a reasonable punishment be for a coach who draws up a post touch for anyone on the team not named Malik? Perhaps lenience should be shown for the occasional post up for zero. Hmm. I'll be honest. There's been a couple of them that have been infuriating. I, I don't know what to say, but um, uh, how about Steven Bardo thinking that there should be more touches for Mati Sissoko? You got to throw it back in for Mati so that he can go to the hoop. Let him I, let him repost. It was like, excuse me, sir. I think your job is to know these teams and understand how they operate. What are you talking about, Steven Bardo? Truly. What is going on? Yeah, you know what? That's what it is. You need to go on a cross-country road trip with Stephen Bardo. Only Motel 8s, two twin-size beds. 
Mm. That's what it is. Mm. Uh, next up, Jer Bear. Uh, Rocket Watts v. AJ Hogard v. Max Christie. Plum has to MFK go. <laughs> I asked Plum for an audio file to answer this one, and he did not provide it. But Jer, I wish there was more we could bring you on for because this is an excellent question. Yeah. Um, next question from Jer Bear. Uh, I'd like to virtue signal. I think MSU women's basketball getting the chance to earn some praise from Don Staley in the second round is a good thing in year one of a new coach. Would you prefer they got an easier draw or do you like South Carolina? I would take I'd the like easier, easier draw. draw. Yeah. <laughs> I dude, want to win more. I, as much as platitudes uh, are nice, it, you know what, what we could do much more for this program is a sweet 16 trip and something that, Robin Vrela can yeah. point at and be like, look what we can do in year one. We're building yeah, something. Yeah, going to be like, I hung with South Carolina, which I hope they do, but like the statistical odds of that happening are low. Yeah. Um, next up, Beppe Plum. Plum, if your forester had an option to undo global warming, but half the population instantly stopped aliving, would you push the button and save billions of future lives or in an entire planet? Remember the Hippocratic Oath or whatever it's called, Murdering Savior. So mm. Plum, first of all, not a doctor. He just plays one on podcast. Uh, <laughs> and um, so he's not bound by an oath, uh, uh, which he would remind you of in answering this question. I'm pretty sure he'd, he wouldn't do it for the global warming. He'd just do it to have the population. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. the Thanos of the of the but, podcast. But without any of the 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 sort of lore of Thanos like trying to make right. this a thing. Correct. Yeah. He would just be like, okay, I, I get shorter lines or whatever. <laughs> Let's go. Bet. Yeah. Um and then following Yeah, we Sit lost this one. Go ahead. No, 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 you read it. You read it. Okay. Locked on Matt will know. <laughs> he's gone. He he probably does, but he's not here right now. How did U of M get left out of the tournament? Their head coach has never lost the game, just like their football team, only a different asterisk. Oh, and rant of the week, shampoo in your eyes. No more can't read, can't write YouTube in the shower. <laughs> we just really appreciate you watching. And if you could just like and comment on the videos, even if it's just, says vinegar strokes that would be great <laughs> so i had to get it back in you had to don't know but we don't need to explain it next up from amopolis do you believe in the power of positive thinking let's say you <sighs> state all nice things about the basketball players and if they win then it's because of your positive thoughts and if they lose well at least you felt good for a while with all that optimism what <sighs> She's trying to change us. That's what Susan's doing here. She's trying to take us and change us and make us different. Well, all right, Mamopoli. Paul, have you considered the positive, uh, the power of negging? If I say all negative things, then they mm -hmm. will exceed my expectations. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, then I was right. And that feels good, too. <laughs> Yeah, like we, Jonesy and I come from a time where there were red pill <laughs> gurus available on Internet and TV that taught about negging and the <laughs> incredible things that it can do for your and now game. <laughs> and now I've learned that that's not an appropriate way to treat women, but is an appropriate way to treat a basketball team. Yes. The appropriate so, way to treat women is to forget that their tournament is also <laughs> happening and not include them on the outline. <laughs> it was a really terrible omission. It was a really, I feel, I feel absolutely terrible about it. I was watching the YouTube videos too, and I was like taking notes on them and just, oh, I feel terrible. <laughs> Next up, at is those press. Okay. Go ahead. At Izzo's press conference this afternoon, he said, for 29 years, we've tried to schedule some of the best non-conference teams. Is that the only reason that they made it into the tournament, or did the committee see something else? I mean, it's uh, certainly it probably, a factor. 
Yeah, their non-conference strength of schedule. What's frustrating about that, though, is that if they had not played that non-conference strength of schedule, what we saw from MSU this year is that when they lost, they lost close. And that when they won, they won handedly. Mm -hmm. We might be able to surmise that if they had played some lower level competition than they ended up playing, they probably would have won handedly. Yeah. Might have actually ended up their net ranking be, being pretty much the same. Oh, so, okay. W- like, it, because they would have won handedly. And so, yeah. as it, a result because... of their net ranking being the same, their record would have also been better, which means that we would have been comfortably in. Yeah. So, like, in some ways, uh, yes, the strength of schedule got them in, but you can question it also. Okay. I'll... If they had 20, if they had 23 wins, we're, we're in the tournament. I don't care who the, they played. Swap out James Madison, Indiana State. I don't think it matters. Okay. Win All by right. more than 10. Okay. If you say so. Sure. Because Net but, looks at margin of win, victory. So yes, if you win by 15, that. 20 points like against garbage opponents, like that's a good win. Uh, Blowing a team out like you're supposed to. Uh, think there's a little bit more that goes into it than that but sure we'll take your we'll take i'm not i am not i don't claim to know all of the the finer points of the net um also just beat next, iowa in, in ohio state that truly solves all your problems yeah yeah that that is really where it becomes a moot point um next up for mr neurotic pants bless your heart we got you on this one uh gretch if Alex and Jonesy were birds, what kind would they be? I don't know. What's a what's like a little little bird, and then uh, and it's a little bird. A little so you're hawk. big bird, is what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely okay. big bird. There is no doubt about that. I'm big. I'm lanky. I have uh, yeah, no coordination. <laughs> imaginary friends. <laughs> so um, this is all a fever dream of mine. Um, and then for plum, what's the nasaliest bird? I don't know. Squawks a lot nasally. I, there's there is a good answer you could give here that you're not, but it. What don't is worry it, about Nick it, Jones? It's obviously next up from Mister Neurotic Pants. <laughs> Do you guys see? How living near Dayton puts me in an odd place as a fan. Uh, I do appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I can, I can see that. I mean, it also, Sheehan's right. It would have been good television to have MSU St. John's uh, in those playing games. I was pretty well convinced that we were going to be in one of those. And lo, not even close, as it turns out. And finally, uh, this week in Spartan Nation, AJ arouses suspicion after accepting a pure options endorsement. Not that much suspicion, though. I think <laughs> confirmation yeah, of we, suspicion, maybe, that we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mel Tucker, uh, mini... Ministries is asked to leave ministries. after preaching in front of Wells Hall. Keep chopping, brothers and sisters. Finally, a drunken ESPN commentator is fired after speculating Michigan State hasn't seen the last of Mike D'Antonio. Mm. Mm. Mel Tucker Ministries is very likely to happen, isn't it? Yes. Wow. That feels, and the including the Polaris, uh, Polaris, whatever the slingshot, the slingshot. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's how he'll get around the the Ministries campus. Uh, next up, uh, Upper Deck Jerk Guy, is it true gingers have no soul? I'm sorry Matt Sheehan's not here, but uh, he is quite soulful and quite kind. We're big Matt Sheehan fans. Um, next up from Upper Deck Jerk Guy, are you now or have you ever been a man- member of the Communist Party? Uh, I own the Little Red Book. Does that make me a communist? You're definitely on a list then, bud. Yeah. Great. I had a, uh, a person, uh, a Chinese person, bring it back with them after they were a law school student. Then you're on they went, two. Bo- you're on two lists. Yeah, yeah. Then, no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, McCarthy, he's very dead, but he also doesn't know about you. Uh, last up from Upper Deck Jerk Guy, what player, good or bad, will surprise the most in the tournament for MSU? I'm gonna go. I'm going Jackson Kohler. 
Yeah, you're on this Jackson Kohler kick right yeah, now. That's what I'm that's what Sur- I'm going on. Surprise the most. The word here is surprise the most. Yep. That's yep. what you've really gotta hone in on. Which removes some of the seniors. Like, can they really truly surprise you at this point? The surprise to me would be if they start putting it together and we go on a winning streak, and then the surprise would be AJ Hogarth and Malik Hall yep. doing something consistently. So I'm going to manifest that right here, upper deck jerk guy. For you, the surprise is we go on a bit of a run because Malik Hall and AJ Hogarth become consistent, reliable basketball players that we expected them to be all this time and they never were until this moment next up kiski bumboo is good had my doubts but it is good probably the only smart thing you guys have ever talked about on the pod thank you uh cedar village bagel i think disagrees with you but that's fine uh you're correct in this uh (laughs) next up one Mm. what are you gonna do Uh, uh as reigning champ why don't you answer my questions first well, you don't give us a lot of free booze. That's first. And also, <laughs> you got last because of this question. Last up from the Kitsky and last up in total, AJ Hogard would be better football player than basketball. Changed my mind. Uh, he would only have to concentrate for six seconds at a time. I don't disagree with this. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> actually, maybe he should have tried that. Yeah. I can, I can imagine uh, like a like a tight end. AJ Hogard or something like that. I could see it happening. Yeah. Um, this has been a great then episode. To... We're thankful again for Matt Sheehan coming on. It is tournament time, and we are very excited for this uh, this March Madness. Uh, Greg, as always, go green. Go white!